straight ahead on OC News, baseball stadiums across the country are celebrating one of the most anticipated days of the season, opening day. And just, thought, and just when you thought the sunshine was here to stay, rain will be upon us. Southern California this week, I'll have the forecast for tomorrow's showers. OC News starts now. Welcome back, Titans. I'm Tawny McCoy. And I'm Kelsey Culver. OC News is brought to you by the broadcast journalism students of Cal State Fullerton. Batter up! Baseball season has begun and many fans are anxious for the beginning of the new season. Here's Kyle Miller with the latest. Thanks, Tawny. After a long period of hibernation, baseball has awakened and the Cubs and Cardinals started off the season at Wrigley Field Sunday night. Today, the rest of the league is in action as opening day is underway. Fans have some crazy rituals when it comes to opening day. Dodgers fans woke up early to head out to Chavez Ravine to see the boys in blue play. Some Angels fans took a flight to Seattle to see their team play. Meanwhile, around the rest of the league, some, summer, some former Cal State Fullerton players are starting their season today in the big leagues. Hey baseball fans, the season has officially begun and I am here at the Cal State Fullerton baseball field and we have quite the amazing Titan alumni to keep an eye on this season. Just to name a few fellow Titans, we have Matt Chapman, who plays for the Oakland A's, Austin Deemer, who plays for the Minnesota Twins, and Jared Deacon, who plays for the San Francisco Giants. All of their fellow Cal State Fullerton students are all cheering them on and wishing them a great 2015 baseball season. And good luck to our current Cal State Fullerton baseball team, as we wish them all a great season as well. Hope to see you all out on the field. Go Titans! How about a curveball for the fans? Major League Baseball parks are incorporating new security guidelines. All stadiums will require fans to pass through the metal detectors to enter the park. With the help of the Department of Homeland Security, 30 stadiums across the nation will incorporate this new measure. Fans can leave their belts and shoes on, but keys, phones, and heavy metals must be checked. Fans are encouraged to arrive early to the games because of these screenings. Rolling Stone magazine is in hot water today after a scathing new investigation found numerous flaws in its reporting. The report is centered around its discredited story about a gang rape at the fraternity at the University of Virginia, which will hopefully not deter future victims from coming forward. Let's take a look at that statement. The authors of the investigation were blunt. This report is very much intended as a piece of journalism about a failure of journalism. The Columbia School of Journalism was tasked with finding out what went wrong in Rolling Stone magazine's November article about an alleged rape at the University of Virginia. The account told the story of Jackie, who claimed she was gang raped at the Phi Kappa Psi fraternity house. Police say there's no evidence this rape occurred. Flat out, whose fault was this? Well, it was the it was the collective fault of the reporter, the editor, the editor's supervisor, and the fact-checking department. Columbia's review found no one lied or invented facts. The reporting staff will get a second chance. Rolling Stone says no one will be fired, including the story's writer, Sabrina Rubin Erdley. She said in a statement that, quote, these are mistakes that I will not make again. Columbia's report found that Erdley and her editors failed to corroborate Jackie's story with the friends who were with her that night, did not do enough to get a response from the fraternity, and were not aggressive enough in making sure the details provided by Jackie were accurate. Will Dana, the managing editor, released a statement last night saying in part, we would like to apologize to our readers and to all those who were damaged by our story and the ensuing fallout. We pointed out systemic and institutional problems. We leave it up to Rolling Stone to decide how best to deal with these problems. I'm Andy Rose reporting. And how exciting graduation is approaching. Cal State Fullerton is preparing for their annual grad fest. Joey Finiguera is out at the setup with a look at what to expect this week. Grad Fest 2015 is upon us. We're at the main campus at Cal State Fullerton right in front of the Titan shops. And I know these white tents behind me don't look like much right now, but tomorrow they'll be transformed for graduating seniors to come and pick up their caps and gowns, their class rings, balloons, photo frames, everything. You can get anything you want here for graduation seniors, so make sure you make it down from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. April 7th to April 9th. 
Deliberation, deliberation will start tomorrow in the trial of 21-year-old Zokar Sarnov, who was accused of the 2013 Boston bombing marathon. Both the defense and prosecution for Sarnov made their closing arguments today in the final step before the jury decides whether to convict the accused bomber. Sarnov is charged with 30 counts, including setting off weapons of mass destruction at the Boston Marathon. He is also charged with killing three people and wounding, 200, wounding 264 others. The prosecution has showed pictures and graphic videos of Sarnov and his brother, Tamerlan, in the crowd at the marathon and said, quote, he wanted to terrorize this country. He wanted to pu punish America for what it was doing to his people. On the other hand, the defense says that uh, Zokar was influenced by his older brother and that if it wasn't for Tamerlan, the attack would not have happened. The accused Boston bomber faces life in prison or possibly the death penalty in this act of terrorism. Like Rosie the Riveter said, we can do it. The seventh annual women's conference was rocketed by keynote speaker Condoleezza Rice. Kimberly O'Neill has the story. Cal State Fullerton was once again the host for Congressman Ed Royce's seventh annual women's conference inside the TSU. Females from around Southern California lined up to wait patiently to enter Congress in Ed Royce's seventh annual women's conference. Doors opened at 8 a.m. and the biggest excitement for everyone was ex-Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice giving this year's keynote speech. I'm, I'm expecting to, to hear uh, Secretary Rice's comments about the state of women, especially in California. Um, and to meet other women who are uh, Republicans and other Cal State Fullerton people here, and just to, to learn and meet new people and to hear Secretary Rice. Uh, today's event was more focused on women's um, issues relating to equal opportunity, uh, career opportunity, and uh, Condoleezza Rice is gonna be here today, and a very powerful woman, and I hope to get inspired by, by her speech. Protesters were outside the TSU protesting silently with regarding unequal pay in the workforce for women. The attendees were seated inside the theater waiting for the conference to begin. Once the conference began, Mrs. Royce said a few words about her husband before he came on stage. The most popular seminar at the women's conference was celebrity chef Jamie Gwynn. She talks about food trends for 2015. Other seminars consist of finance, children's health, and women's success stories. After the seminars, females were asked to go back to the theater to hear keynote speaker Condoleezza Rice. This year's keynote speaker Condoleezza Rice expressed a few powerful words, God, family, and education. At Cal State Fullerton, Kimberly O'Neill, OC News. April showers bring May flowers. Your current temperature in Fullerton right now is 66 degrees. The low tonight is at 49. The humidity is going to be at 27% with a wind at 12 miles per hour, but I kind of felt it was more breezy than that. My hair went wild today. Um, the sun sets at 7.16 p.m., so you have a few more hours. Now for your five-day forecast. All right, so where am I at right now? Okay, here. I'll stand. Maybe they'll stand this way. There we go. All right, so last week we had sunny weather. Amazing for spring break, right? Well, tomorrow we're going to be looking at the weather at 67 degrees with um, periodically showers throughout the day. Um, the low all week is going to be at night at 48 um, in the high and the low 50s. So I'm definitely going to be wearing socks to bed. But don't let the rain scare you on Tuesday because throughout the rest of the week it's going to be in the high 70s. So don't forget to wear your sunscreen. Now for your national forecast. Throughout the country, we have a widespread of warm weather. Um, so there's not going to be much storms around, but there's going to be isolated storms or isolated rains. Some in Dallas and can you? Some in Dallas, New York, and Atlanta. And then your very own California. That's it for your weather forecast. Kelsey, take it over, please. Thank you. Cal State Fullerton has a cooking class on campus. 
Maribel Marquez has the story. And we had the latest on health and entertainment when we return. It's what powers our journey to reach unimaginable heights. It fosters a sense of yearning to create, explore, and soar. It strengthens our will to climb to the top. It's the bedrock of our conviction that nothing's impossible. It transforms us and sets us free to thrive and build lives of purpose. Titan pride is at the heart of who we are. Breaking box office records and award season hasn't come to an end just yet. Shauna Hudson has the latest news in entertainment. Thanks guys, we've got an action packed couple of weeks in the world of entertainment. I know spring break was last week, but let's go ahead and dive right in. Furious 7, the latest installment in the Fast and Furious franchise, raced into theaters this Friday, shadowing the death of Paul Walker, one of the movie's stars who died tragically during production. The film has been receiving generally positive reviews, with critics describing it as bittersweet. However, Rolling Stone said it's still Two hours of pure pow fueled by dedication and passionate heart. The movie broke box office records, earning $143 million over the weekend, making it the biggest opening so far this year. The 2015 Kids' Choice Awards took place Saturday, March 28th at the Forum in Inglewood, California. Winners included Emma Stone for Favorite Actress and The Hunger Games as Favorite Movie. And One Direction took home the award for Favorite Music Group, despite the recent departure of Zayn Malik from the band. On the note of music, the iHeartRadio Music Awards took place the day after the Kids' Choice Awards at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles. Winners included artists Sam Smith, Jesse J, Ariana Grande, and Nicki Minaj. But the biggest winner of the night was the Artist of the Year, Taylor Swift. More than anything in the world, I just hope any of the fans who are watching know how much I adore you. The full award show can now be watched online via NBC's YouTube channel. And speaking of YouTube, we've all been waiting for Justin Bieber's full uncensored Comedy Central roast to go up online, and it's finally here. Lip Sync Battle recently uploaded the show featuring comedians, public figures, and musicians alike to poke fun at the pop star. Some highlights included appearances by Martha Stewart and Will Ferrell's infamous character, Ron Burgundy. But by the end, Bieber was able to laugh it off and crack a few jokes himself. He even issued a heartfelt apology for his recent behavior that may have changed a few opinions about him. Really, let's get serious for a second. Um, there was really no uh, preparing me for this life. Um, I was thrown into this at 12 years old and I uh, didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Uh, there's been That's all we've got in entertainment today. Back to you guys. Aside from all the great events offered at Cal State Fullerton, for the second semester now, there's cooking class cooking classes here on the campus. Reporter Maribel stopped by to see what, all, what it was all about. Between school, work, and other activities, it can get difficult for students to get a healthy meal in their busy day. But a cooking workshop offered at Cal State Fullerton can be the guide to a healthy and balanced lifestyle. During the workshop, the gastronome's executive chef gave a live demonstration on how to marinate, cut, and prepare tofu. Students were able to ask him questions about ingredients and procedure and after enjoyed a full course meal. The workshop then followed by information on how to plan well-proportioned meals when on a budget. This just shows like a well-balanced plate just because a lot of people, maybe they overdose on one specific item. We want them to have all their nutrients and so by having a balanced plate they can get all the nutrients that they after lots of useful information, the class ended with a fun game that required students to go grocery shopping and stay within their budget. Adding chia seeds to my water for extra fiber was my favorite tip. Make sure to keep an eye out for future cooking workshops. For OC News, this is Maribel Marquez. Selfie sticks have become a new trend for taking photos. However, many music festivals have banned them. Rachel Ramos has the update. 
Selfie sticks have been one of the biggest trends at music festivals these past few years, but new regulations are leaving festival goers upset and unable to capture that perfect selfie. On Coachella's Festival Music Info website, selfie sticks have been labeled as narcissists on a list of prohibited items. A selfie stick like this one is a monopod used to capture self-portraits. Simply strap your phone on like so and extend for that perfect selfie. I'm Rachel Ramos, OC News. Back to you guys in the studio. After the break, we have the highlights from this weekend in college basketball. Rugby team hopes to make a statement. This study abroad program includes a four day trip to Rome. Welcome to the Cal State Fullers in the Sport. March Madness has reached its pinnacle, and we have two teams left fighting for the title. Here's Kyle to get you caught up with the latest on what's going on with the Final Four. 64 teams went in with a dream to win it all when March Madness began. Now, in the beginning of April, we've narrowed it down to the last two. Over the weekend, there were two games. Let's start with Duke and Michigan State. Mike Krzyzewski and Tom Izzo would be facing off in Indy. Michigan State got off to a good start in this game. Denzel Valentine with his third three of the game and put the Spartans up eight points. Duke would mount a strong rally and have this one tied. Just as Winslow is going to miss the layup here, and Jaheel Okafor is going to slam it down to put Duke up 18-16. A little later in the first, Tyus Jones would hit a three to tie this. Sorry, hit a three to put the Blue Devils up 11. And Tom Izzo would not be too happy with the score. Duke would continue a strong performance in the second half. Jaheel Okafor with a massive dunk to put Duke up 17 points. Later, off the inbounds pass, Grayson Allen's going to miss his own three here. But what an effort he's going to make to grab his own rebound and get a dunk of his own. Duke's going to be up 19 points. Justice Winslow's going to get in on the highlight plays with a nice Euro step finish to put Duke up 19 points. The Blue Devils are going to move on to the championship game. And on the flip side, this is going to be the end of the road for the Spartans. Final score, Duke 81, Michigan State 61. Kentucky was undefeated taking on the Badgers. Frank the Tank Kaminsky would find a way to get to the basket, and he's going to spin and hit a tough jumper off the glass, and in addition, he's going to draw the foul. Let's jump ahead to the second half. We're going to be tied at 56. Aaron Harrison's going to drive in for the layup, and he's going to get the lead for the Wildcats. But... Wisconsin would have an answer late in the game. Sam Decker's going to hit a step back three to put the Badgers up late. Kentucky would be trailing by four points with under 10 seconds left in their season and their winning streak on the line. Harrison's going to try to get up a quick three and he's going to airball it. Wisconsin would get the upset win over formerly undefeated Kentucky team. Frank Kaminsky finished with 20 points and 11 rebounds. Sam Decker would finish with 16 points of his own. Wisconsin moves on to face the Duke Blue Devils in the championship game. The championship game will be on at 6.15 p.m. tonight. Be sure to catch that game on CBS on your mobile phone with the March Madness app available on Google Play and the App Store. So who do you ladies think is going to win the championship game tonight? They're both great teams, Kelsey, don't you think? Uh, pretty great. But I'm going to go with Wisconsin because I go for the underdogs. I don't know. <laughs> I think Duke's going to win. Uh, they have great I, season so far. I think we need to bet on this. Oh, it's on. Okay, <laughs> <It> sounds good. <laughs> Well, how about some fresh goodies and fun entertainment? After five months of absence, the downtown Fullerton Farmer's Market is back in action. From farm and to table, the downtown have. Fullerton Farmer's yes. Market is back in action, and the return of the market has brought an excited community. I love it. I've been so excited and anticipating this. So we were here last year. Um, a lot of our customer base is here in Fullerton, so we were just really excited that it started. We couldn't wait. People of all ages can enjoy this weekly afternoon event with a variety of goods such as fresh produce, fresh juice, seafood, plants, and much more. I think it's awesome um, for Fullerton. Um, I think it's something that everybody waits for. Um, I know growing up we would always come here um, and try out the baba ganoush. That guy has been here forever. Um, and the fruits are great, organic. The market is located in the downtown plaza on Wilshire Avenue between Harper Boulevard and Pomona Avenue. The downtown Fullerton Farmer's Market will be here every Thursday through the end of October. For OC News, I'm Samantha Galarza. 
And that's all we have today for OC News. I'm Kelsey Culver. And I'm Tony McCoy. See you next week.